Good morning. Got my stuff put together. I'm going to be making some ribs in the crock pot today. Whoop. Crock pot's in the dishwasher. Just a second. Crock-Pot gets a workout every weekend. Now I just need to grab some liners. Sometimes I remember the liners and sometimes I don't. But today I did, yay! So, <clears throat> I've been craving ribs a lot lately, and um, one of the groups I'm in, there's a gentleman, his name is Charles Washington, and um, he's been carnivore for 12, 13 years now, and he talks about how he eats ribs all the time, and so... Since I read that, I've been really craving them. So, that's what I'm about to make. I did a little uh, YouTube watching to find out, you know, how to make a rub and, uh, and his recipe. So, it's a mixture of his ingredients and the ingredients that I like and the amount. So, this is that Greek seasoning that I bought a while ago. I'm just going to put a tablespoon in it just for some diff various flavorings. And then I'm going to put some Italian seasonings in there. What is this little measuring thing? Oh, I thought it was a tablespoon, but I think it's a coffee scoop. So, yeah, coffee scoop worth. So, teaspoon. Tablespoon of Greek and well, we'll just pretend it's a tablespoon. One tablespoon of Italian seasoning. <clears throat> then I bought some chili powder, and these are brand new, so you're gonna have to suffer through watching me open these. Maybe I'll do that and then let you turn your back on. Okay. Now, so here's our chili powder. Up here comes the dog. They heard me say the letter. They heard me say the word okay, and they assume. Because when I say that word, it means they can stop doing what they're doing and get a treat. And they all come running. Anyway, so there's the chili powder. I'm going to put a little, a little bit of crushed red pepper. Not as much as what... He puts on his, so I'm going to do half of a coffee scoop. Yeah, maybe a little more than that. I don't want to burn myself. So, yeah, about half of it. Oh, that's not the right lid. <clears throat> I'll do a one with one of tablespoon paprika my um, got a new tripod but it doesn't aim down very well so I've got it maybe if I slid it out that would help a little bit here we go now I'm going to do two of onion powder One, two. <clears throat> so, for the record, I am still doing carnivore, in case you couldn't tell, haha. -ha. And um, I am um, <clears throat> uh, what? I'm down fifty pounds. Now, I hit the 50 pound mark, so this is garlic salt. I'm going to do two of this also. So hopefully when I'm done with this rub, it'll last a good long time. 
Um, wait a minute. One of these didn't get their little covering. All right, not you. You got yours. You got yours. Aha! There it is, Italian seasoning. That little, it's that little grate that tells you how, how much you can shake in and out. So then, because, because again, I used no salt to get some added protein. I'm going to turn it to where it's in the pour spout. I'm going to do two tablespoons of this. And I use this for supplementing potassium. And I probably get plenty of potassium. So here's the thing. The old school people, they have been doing this for 10, 15 years. None of them supplement. Um, they said that they every time that there's like a surge in this way of eating, people come in and they have some kind of new thing they try to add to it. I'm going to do two tablespoons of my Redmond's Real Salt. And um, so the old school people, the ones that have been doing this, like I said, 12, 15 years, they don't, they don't do nose to tail. I used to try to add liver. <clears throat> well, I did add liver. I didn't like the flavor of it. But um, <clears throat> I did it because I thought I was supposed to. So now I'm going to shake this up. But after joining the group, and a Facebook group, it's called Zeroing In On Health. And after joining that group, there's so many things that the new age, the, the new carnivores are spouting that the old carnivores are like, what? We didn't do that. We've been doing this for 12 years. We've been fine. We don't have scurvy. We don't have vitamin deficiencies. We don't have problems. And we don't add all that cockamamie stuff that you add. Sorry, yes, I'm blowing my nose. They, you know, so the old timers, they don't use that stuff. They don't, uh, they don't eat ad liver unless they actually like liver. They don't add brains and kidney and all that stuff. Now, is it more nutrient dense? Absolutely. Will you find more vitamins and minerals in the organ meat? Yes, yes you will. And they'll say, yes, you will. However, these people have been doing this and thriving for all these years without adding organ meat. Um, so anyway, so I watched a couple videos about how to, um, and again, the group that I'm in is called Zeroing In On Health. It's a Facebook group, and you get lots of good advice, and they're very <clears throat> rigid. This is how it's done. This is how we did it. Don't make it complicated. So they're very rigid, so you can't go in asking dumb questions, as I find out. Um, <clears throat> when you go in, you need to use the search button and search and see what questions have been asked. So there's the rub. Notice there's no sugar in it. There's no um, Splenda, no substitutions for, for anything. No sweet at all. I patted it dry because that's what they do on the video. I've also seen in the video <coughs> they do not... <coughs> um, <clears throat> remove the membrane uh, when they're using a crock pot. Some of them do, but a lot of them do not because the membrane is going to hold it together when this becomes fall off the bone good or done. 
So, now that I've dirtied up my, my hand, I'm just gonna sprinkle it on. And something else I've learned is they, uh, this hand's still clean. You learn in nursing school to have a clean hand and a dirty hand. Um, something else I've learned is that they stand them up on the side. And they said you put them meteor side down. Well, I got, because I don't know difference in ribs. Um, all I know is that I've been craving them. Don't know a thing about them. Um, and so I got some. I told you all about it last week. Got some and they were so good. Well, yesterday was my birthday. So mom and I and a dear friend of mine, we went to, out to eat at uh, Dexter Barbecue. And um, we, I had ribs there too. They were so good, but here's the thing. I tasted sugar. And <clears throat> trace amounts, I'm not going to stress over. However, I tasted the sugar that was caramelized onto it. Now, you know, I, I don't know. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to cry about it. And if somebody says, hey, let's go to, to Dexter Barbecue again, I'm definitely going to say yes. But at least I know. So now I'm standing them up in the crock pot. Got my liner in there, and I'm going to put it on low. Oh, I have to plug it in first. Aha! Just a second, got to wash my hand again. Nah. <clears throat> so... The reason, what I've figured out, is the reason why you stand up <coughs> the, uh, the ribs is because that liquid is going to drain off of them and it's going to create a soupy, watery substance. Well, when you go out in a restaurant, those ribs are not, it's not soup. So, um, so now I'm going to turn this on and let this cook on low for about eight hours. It's eight o'clock, so nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, four. So around 4.30 or five, I will pull them off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them back on this uh, cookie sheet and we're gonna put them in the oven at 400 for, uh, no, 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 no. We're gonna put it on broil, sorry. I've never used my broil before. I don't know why, but I've always just never have. So, um, so I'm, we're going to use the broil, and um, that's how we're going to do that. Um, that doesn't fit up in my cabinet. Um, so, yeah, so this is going to crock pot now, eight, nine hours, and then we'll pull them out and set them on here and broil for four or five minutes. I'm going to kind of clean up some of this stuff. This has to stay out. I'm going to make a little room and... I'll show you what next phase two is of our Saturday food prep. <coughs> so you know I like to experiment as evident of me doing these ribs here. And uh, <coughs> something else. So I bought several different things this week I want to kind of test out. One of them is pork sausage patties, fully cooked. You know, I take bacon every day. And um, I thought, you know, it'd be interesting to see how my body reacts to this. Again, I'm doing this long term, so, you know, I want to know if my body is okay with stuff, so why not try it this week? So, <clears throat> this does have in the ingredients, I'm taking glasses off, Pork, water, salt, has a little bit of, or well, I shouldn't say, it has corn syrup, solids, spices, dextrose, sugar. Um, <clears throat> so it does have some sugar in it. Um, the sh but I don't, I don't know because, anyway, I'm just going to try it. Because, like I said, I want to know how it works because 
it will be a lot easier than cooking a big old thing of bacon every week if I can just buy this, and this is cheaper than a package of bacon. So I'm gonna, what I'm, my, my plan is to, I'm gonna boil up some eggs and then um, and take a two or about, well probably about two eggs and three of these with me to work every day for my breakfast. So that's the game plan with this. Um, <clears throat> I also bought a bunch of these, and I should not have gotten this particular, it, it's these ground beef hamburgers that I already padded out. It's 93.7, so I may have a little constipation issue this week because the pull, you want fat in your diet. Well, not this week. Well, yeah, because, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any that I'm cooking up for this week, so next week. But, um, so yeah, so I may have a little bit of issues pooping next week, so I'm going to have to remember to add um, butter uh, and add fat to what I'm eating so it doesn't become an issue. Because it comes an issue when you eat too much lean meat. <coughs> so that would be... You know, I buy groceries for two weeks. I bought some steaks and some other stuff. And something else I bought was chicken thighs. Well, here again, chicken is a very lean meat. So I'll be adding ghee and I'll be adding butter to the chicken. Um, maybe adding some uh, heavy cream, stuff like that. Um, but what I do, when I buy stuff, I buy it in bulk. So that way I can... <coughs> Save a little money. These were a dollar, what is it, a dollar ninety nine a pound for the family size. So I have to move you. Don't get seasick on me. Gallon. I don't need gallon for those, but I need some of these. So if you haven't figured out by now, I'm a mild hoarder. I say mild because it typically doesn't trickle out into other areas of my house. And I can usually keep it hidden from the world. <coughs> so, I, uh, yeah, you name it, it's probably in here. And it's never anything serious. Like, I just put away a uh, George Foreman grill I bought at a garage sale probably about 10 years ago. But, um, yeah, and I have a, a spare room. I call it my hoarder starter kit, and uh, that was rough. It's where I keep my yarn, but then I'm also a box hoarder, like empty boxes, because I crochet, and I want to make sure that um, I always have a box that something will fit in. So, I... Uh, I hoard boxes. Um, anyway, I also hoard dogs. I got four of them. <laughs> um, if you ever want to see some of the stuff I crochet on Facebook, it's called Yarn Diversions by Terry Leaves. Um, so anyway, so now what I'm going to do is break this down into more usable stuff. I feel like this would make <clears throat> four servings for me. So let's see how many... Because it's four pounds. So, I, what I'm doing is I'm going to break this down into four servings, Ziploc, or one serving Ziploc bags. And then, when I want to use it, I can. I watched a really good video this week on, um, or maybe it was last week. A lady bought some um, pork panko, which is really just crushed pork rinds. But I never knew there was such a thing. I'm looking for it. Just a second. I'm going to show you what I bought. Bought them on Amazon. And don't worry. I ain't getting any money from them. But <clears throat> that's that's what it is. Pork panko. But what I wanted to try. Why I even cared about trying it. Was because they are very. It's consistent. When I crush up my pork rinds. 
oh my goodness, there's all kinds of chunks and whatnot in there. So I thought, well, why not try it? It's not going to hurt anything. I mean, it's pork rinds. Wait a minute. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Ingredients. Yeah, pork rinds cooked in pork fat and salt. So it's only pork rinds, fat, pork fat, and salt. So there we go. <clears throat> That's carnivore. So, so I want to try later. I was thinking, boy, that would be good uh, to try that. So one of these I'm not going to freeze. Dog. I'm going to turn on my oven. We're going to experiment. Today is a day full of experimentation. Trying new things. Reaching new heights. Yeah. <clears throat> and all that stuff. Um, what I also will do sometimes when I buy in bulk is I'll, you know, use these small quart, what is this, quart size jar bags, and then I put them inside one big gallon size bag, size bag and have the label of what it is. So that way, because, you know, when things get frozen, it becomes just some blob of meat, and you can't always tell what it is inside. So um, we're going to... Experiment. Or not experiment. We're going to label. We're going to label our experiment. Now, when I was doing keto um, and still incorporating vegetables, I do the same thing. Um, which it doesn't matter if you're doing vegetables or not. You can still meal prep <coughs> and buy in bulk. Um, but I did this a lot in keto also. Got dogs everywhere. They're just hoping something gets dropped. They're like, ooh, mom's in the kitchen. I mean, she's doing stuff. Maybe she'll drop something. But I have news for him. Not this. So I've been trying to, I mean, I still have my steak. Um, I'm out of the cow that I bought. But um, <clears throat> I did add, I did buy some <clears throat> ribeye and sirloin. But one of the reasons why I'm looking at different cuts is for cost reasons, for different types of meat and stuff. I am um, not rich. <laughs> Who is, right? So, um, <clears throat> so what I want to do is... Um, Trying to be cost effective. So we have so in doing so, I'm adding more pork and chicken and other meats to see how my body reacts. Because like I said, uh, this is a lifetime thing, and just because you know, beef works really good right now. Doesn't mean that I will forever be able to, you know, I can forever long-term afford meat. Although there's some people and what they, what they do is they eat, they'll buy those hamburger patties or buy ground beef and eat hamburger patties for every meal. One lady, and she's one who's been doing this, I think 12, 11, 12 years, she goes, to McDonald's and she'll buy uh, six, six, no, 16 quarter patties, four times four. Yeah, something like that. 
She'll go and buy a quarter pound. She'll buy, let me just say it this way. She'll buy two pounds worth of hamburger patties from McDonald's and she'll eat on them throughout the day. So she may eat four for breakfast. Oh, I guess it'd be eight. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. So it'd be eight. So, um, so she'll eat eight in a day and then, um, so then eight in a day, then that would be, yeah, so she would eat four for lunch and four for supper. Um, now I'm gonna take this one and label this my chicken. Chicken thigh. I put raw. So that way I know that that's what's inside of it. This is going to be a long video. And I really wasn't hoping, planning on that. But, yeah. And I'm not, I don't have to close it. I'm just trying to have it all labeled. So let me go set this in the freezer. So here's how my brain works. <laughs> Welcome to the weirdness. I, um, last night I was watching YouTube and um, this lady, her name is Sensible Blonde on YouTube. She makes a lot of carnivore recipes. So if you don't follow her, she's really a good one to follow to get some, uh, I mean, she makes some kind of carnivore bread. She makes just all kind of carnivore meals for people that want variety and stuff and want to different flavors. So anyway, I was watching her and last night, I just, now as I was doing this chicken, I'm like, ooh, I should do, even though I don't have any ham for chicken cordon bleu, I could do. And then my brain just goes to town. So that's kind of how a lot of my stuff goes down. I just kind of, just like, oh, hey, what about? And, so my oven is on 350 and <coughs> and I've got these chicken thighs right here so my plan I'm not gonna beat them up I'm just gonna take a I got some cheese over here and I'm just gonna kind of set them around I like I said I don't have ham but I got cheese so I'm gonna take this little piece of cheese I'm gonna just fold it up in there that's it, just like a sandwich. I'm going to roll it in this egg. And then, I'm going to put it in that pork panko that I just showed you. Now, she dipped hers twice, but I'm not going to go through all that right now. Because, <clears throat> this is my first time doing this, and I don't know how much it's going to take. So, again... I'm just going to flop it over, put it down in this egg, flip it around a little bit, bring it over here, and dip it in this pork rind panko stuff. I'm putting this cast iron skillet, and of course the cheese is going to melt and get all over in it, but man, it's going to be so good. And then what I'll do, <clears throat> this will be my lunch today. Then what I'll do is make a um, like a cream sauce after it comes out. That's why I'm gonna do it in my cast iron skillet. Cause then the juices and whatnot will be in there, and I'll just add some um, heavy cream, and then I'll have a good chicken cordon bleu with some sauce in it. Well, there went a piece of that chicken, so I'm just going to make this one into a little chicken nugget. <laughs> it's going to be its own little chicken nugget. There, you sit there, little feller. Just sit there and be good, little feller. Speaking of, these dogs, they are just like all under me. It cracks me up. <clears throat> Usually when I'm <clears throat> doing my stuff, I'll, on the weekends especially, I'll have some kind of bacon or... Something they get some, but sorry, puppies, not today. There we go.
Sorry, I gotta wash my hands before I can touch anything. They're gonna be gross. And when I do stuff like that, I tend to wash them two times. Just to kind of get out anything out from under my nails or whatnot. So, my oven is preheating at 350. I will probably cook it a good 45 minutes. And there goes my... my Kitchen sink getting more and more full. <laughs> so later on, you know, when you see my kitchen sink overflowing, you'll just remember it's because I'm also cooking. Okay, so those tongs have been used on chicken. <clears throat> now, let me wipe this off a little bit and then we'll get on to the next phase. All right. So what I did to add a little extra fat, see those, I put in paths of butter. So plus maybe that'll help it not stick so much. I didn't, you know, I didn't oil the pan or anything before I put the chicken in there. So now I'm gonna put this in my oven at 350. Okay, and where's my timer? We're gonna set this for 45 minutes. Because they're not solid, thick pieces. You know, it's not like whole enclosed bone-in meat. So, um, now, something else that I bought in bulk. Here in Missouri, we have something called pork steaks. Somebody said they don't have it everywhere. I can't imagine not having pork steaks, but this is $1.94 a pound. So, there again, compared to you know, eight, nine dollars for uh, beef ribeye. This is something that I picked up. Bought a couple of them. And here again, I'm just seeing how my body reacts to pork. The few times I ate it last week, I did not have any trouble. So how many pounds is this? Let's see. So that's six pounds. So I need to get six little thingies out of it. So, I'm gonna, hello. I'm gonna do, <coughs> oh, they're bone in. So, I wasn't thinking. Anyway, so, okay, so what I'll do is I'm gonna put two of these in here. You know, the bone, of course, weighs something. So, so I'm going to go on and fill up each of my little bag with two pork steaks. And then I'm going to do just like I did the chicken. I am going to label a big bag and put these down in it so that I know what it is when, um, you know, when I go to get into it. So I'm not going to make you watch this. Um, so I'm going to do this one. I've got another one back here, and I'll show you how it looks when I'm done. So what I'm going to tell you is these big old pork steaks, these little courtside bags just weren't cutting it. I'm not going to be able to get them closed. So instead, I'm going to put them in this gallon size bags. I'll dump them back into it. And... Uh, I'll just label each bag. So now, <clears throat> because I do have steaks left over from when I went grocery shopping two weeks ago, um, now I'll be able to, and what I just bought yesterday, um, I will be able to say, okay, so I'll pull out a pork steak. And the way I usually do my week time <clears throat> suppers. So when I meal prep, like, well, this is something fun, so the ribs are not, um, that's not my lunches. My lunches is usually, um, like the ground beef. So, you know, that, I have three left over because last week made enough when I did it, so they're in the freezer. Well, I just pulled them out. But, um, <clears throat> so I'm not, 
today I don't have a lot of lunch meal prep to do. So what I do is, is I keep a constant rotation of meat because it is just me and my refrigerator. I'm pulling out one today and when I eat tonight, the one I pulled out yesterday will be the one that I eat tonight because it will be defrosted. And so each night I pull something out and the defrosted one is the one I eat from the, you know, that I pulled out the previous day. And then what I pull out today would get eaten tomorrow. So <clears throat> I just kind of keep that constant rotation going. And then I don't have to worry about, um, uh, you know, well, what am I going to pull out for tonight? And will it get defrosted and blah, blah, blah. So this way I just grab something, I pull it out, and that's what I'm having for supper. Um, okay, so it's a pork steak. And I usually just PK, STK. So I don't have to get serious because it's just me. So PK, STK. PK, STK. Um, I think I'd mentioned it that I have not had coffee in several weeks. I have just stopped drinking coffee. Um, I feel a lot better. I don't have to, you know, be, in order for me to drink coffee, I have to add so much cream and I have to add Splenda and I, and I didn't want to do it or Stevia and <coughs> I really want to be true to how I'm eating. So, um, because, you know, this is, any time I mess up or I choose to go off, you know, eat something that isn't what my body wants, then I'm not cheating anything. I am just hurting myself. So, I have truly been as strict and as good as I can be with this. But again, it's for myself. I'm not... I'm not doing this to make other people happy. Uh, otherwise, I would, I would definitely not be eating the type of diet that I'm or type of food that I'm eating. Um, so, <clears throat> sorry, I'm putting stuff away as I'm talking. Um, so I truly have done the best to my ability of eating from the animal kingdom because I, like I said. This is for me, this is long term, this is my life, this isn't just a fun game. I'm truly trying to heal myself and, and heal my body and, and just become a healthier person. Some people have the ability to moderate and some people can do that with the standard American diet. I just can't. There's something in my body that doesn't let me do that. Um, when your body acts like you're drunk because You've eaten a cupcake, and something's wrong there. But anyway, um, so yeah, I stopped drinking the coffee. Occasionally, I have tea, um, not very often, and it's like the the un it's like the I don't know, like the no caffeine kind, like chamomile and vanilla and um, herbal celestial seasoning. I, with my sinus stuff, I do sometimes use a sleepy um, sinus soother. <clears throat> so I don't, um, I don't want to cheat. I don't want to have slip ups because I know how it was to be addicted. I've, this week I've been able to walk into my break room at work and um, there's been cake in there all week long. I have not even wanted to eat that cake. And before I would have knocked down somebody I'd have hit them with a cane, even if they were using that cane, just to get to that cake. And, and it just, it didn't bother me, it didn't call to me. So I've truly broken that addiction. And the same with someone who's addicted to opioids or <clears throat> addicted to meth. You wouldn't say, well, just have a little bit, a little bit won't hurt you. That's just not how this works. That's not how life works. You can't just 
moderate everything. You know, a little bit of sugar, yeah, it can hurt you. Um, so, or in my case, it can hurt me. Let me say it that way. So, um, yeah, so I have not been drinking coffee. And like I said, the occasional tea I've been drinking. And yes, I am in my pajamas because it's Saturday. Um, and my plan is to, I have to deliver, I've made a set of rug rats for a lady for her nursery. So I'm going to deliver that. I'm going to get, uh, that's the end of what I'm doing this weekend at this point. So what I'm going to do is stop the video and then I'll catch back up with you when the uh, ribs are done cooking and when the chicken is done cooking. So I can show you kind of what I'm going to do with the chicken then and with the ribs then. Now the ribs will be quite a bit later. But um, yeah, so I'll catch back up with you whenever those two things are done. Okay, the timer went off for the chicken. And here we have it. That's the chicken. Let me raise it up a little bit. There's lots of juices down in there. So I'm going to turn off the oven and turn on my front element, probably about Medium, that's good. Medium will be fabulous. <clears throat> um, and this. Maybe I can try to zoom in a little bit for y'all. So the problem, like I said a while ago, my my tripod doesn't aim down as much as I would like so kind of just stuck with it is what it is hmm okay now I don't want to don't want to kill them so let's try this instead Pancake turner and my skill is hot, so I have to remember not to touch the other side. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna use a towel because it did stick, and that's all right, I'm not sweating it. If you've seen any of my old beginning videos, my cast iron I do wash with. Um, I do wash with soap and water, so that will all come off when I'm done. Will all come off. I am of the belief that you know, back in the olden days, when my great-grandparents used cast iron, they probably did not bathe it like people do now. Their soaps were harder, so, you know, they would have had a lot of lye soap and some of that stuff, so they may not have used that for their stuff, but... <clears throat> There is no way you can make me believe that they didn't clean it and scrub it out. So, inside is the leftover butter. And I'm going to add some heavy whipping cream. And I'm going to... Let it reduce. So, ooh, you know what would be good in that? See, this is how my brain works. <coughs> Some bacon left over from last week's cooking. So, I mean, chicken, bacon, cheese, 
for real, what else? Oh, man. That would be amazing. Uh-oh. Oh, well, there went a big old hunk of bacon that fell in. And a little bit of garlic will be good in here, too. Well, I'll wait till I get this one done, then I'll dig it out and so I can make a mess. A messy, messy mess. If I can find it. There it is. Ah! Didn't know you're going to be watching me fish for some bacon. Yeah. Let me wash that gum off my hands. So let me give you a little tip. I uh, Rotor Rooter has been a very uh, frequent flyer in my house. He said that before I bought it, like back after the house was, or when they built the house, the, um, the pipes were laid more flat in the basement instead of slanted when the house was built. So he said he was coming to this house for probably about 15, 20 years. So, um, something that he told me that I should do to maybe help decrease the amount of visits he has to make is uh, to pour bleach down my sink about every couple months. And so since I use a lot of, of grease, you know, I pour a lot of grease down my sinks. Um, that's what I've been doing. So um, something else I want to add to this, just to get a little added flavor. And it is not 100% carnivore, but I'm adding it anyway. <clears throat> is a little bit of minced garlic. Not a lot, just a little. <clears throat> I don't need a. I, I like the flavor of garlic. Now, if you have autoimmune order, disorder, if you have a lot of <coughs> issues with what you eat, then I would not suggest adding that. But, thankfully, the majority of my problem is just that I'm too fat. And. Uh, my body doesn't know how to process carbohydrates. So now I'm going to reduce this, and it'll take a little while, so I'm going to push pause, and then I'll show you how this looks um, poured over the chicken. All right, so there's the chicken with the cheese inside of it. That's how it turned out. And now... dogs heard me say all right so they all came running thinking so I'm excited so that's that's our bechamel sauce our reduction of the leftover chicken and butter and the bacon and garlic sauce I added so I'm just gonna pour that over it and I'm gonna pour the rest of it out on the edge because like I said, chicken does not have a lot of fat. The bacon will add some, the butter will add some, and the heavy cream will add some. And this is heavy. So now, <coughs> whew, I'll set that there. A fork, and I'll get a knife. Trying to zoom in a little bit for you. Move, dog. You're getting stepped on. Now. This. That's how it's going to look. And there's cheese inside there. I used Gouda cheese. 
because G Gouda is Gouda. So um, anyway, so now the way I'm going to eat this is I'm just going to cut it up into bite-sized bites. And then I'll use a spoon so I don't get more on me than in me. And this is just kind of how I eat in general. I like a spoon because I am Messy Marvin. And, um, yep, so this is, I'm going to eat this up. And um, this will be my first meal for the day. Um, what time is it? It is 9.41. So our ribs still have another eight hours to go. And um, that's perfectly fine. Um, and I've got other things around the house that I'll be working on. And cr crochet projects, possibly laundry, but maybe not. Not really sure what I'm going to do on this as far as laundry goes. I have to go in and see how much laundry I have. <clears throat> so, yeah, you're about to see just how unclassy I am. But I want a little bit of the bacon and a little bit of the sauce and a little bit of that chicken. Mmm. -hmm. That's some good stuff, Maynard. So yeah, try that sometime. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna go eat and I'll catch back up to you when the ribs are done. So, bye. Okay, here's where we're at. It's been eight hours. And uh, wait a minute, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, 8 hours. Um, the ribs started to fold inward. So I took a skewer and I stabbed it to uh, help them stay where they were in place. Now, the things that I've seen on TV or other so some YouTube videos, they just end it and dump the ribs out, and it's just one big soupy mess. Well, the one video I really liked, they didn't. Now, also keep in mind these are baby back ribs. Um, I wish I would have just gotten the St. Louis style. So, and also, down inside here, it's kind of sweaty. So, um, inside the, um, inside the bag, I'm going to, we're going to make our own barbecue sauce. Maybe. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to take the juices because being carnivore, we don't want to have any extra stuff that we shouldn't have. I do have some um, sugar-free barbecue sauce that I could use, but I would prefer to not do it. So, so what I'm doing now the dogs are waiting on me. Ow! So, ow! So what I'm doing now is, other than burning myself, <clears throat> I've collected, I want that liquid, and I'm going to simmer this and bring it uh, and reduce it. I'm also going to put in some ghee. And again, remember I said I wing it half the time. I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm going to put in a little bit of the rub just to carry over that flavor. That's not it. But there we go. I did have on real clothes today, y'all. But when I knew I was coming back to cooking, I did not want to mess up my real shirt. So, I don't know. What is that? Tablespoon, teaspoon, something. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to let my ribs cool down and dry off, and uh, I'm going to bring this down, I'm going to reduce this, 
as much as possible and kind of let maybe let it thicken up a little bit and then I'll get back to you and show you where we're at um also as I know I'm noticing on this tray these ribs they um the bone is definitely pulling falling out um but what I want is I want to create some kind of something to go on the top of the ribs, kind of similar to a sauce. So, and, and I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna kind of glaze it, and then I'm gonna put it into the, um, uh, under the broiler, and then let it kind of just glaze it. So anyway, so I'm gonna work on reducing this. That's what it looks like now, because that's the ghee and seasonings in there. And, um, and the liquid fat from the pork rib. So now I'm gonna start to reduce this. Ah, this is pretty interesting. I'm gonna get a plate to put these on. It's cooled down. So, uh, you know, I, I, right now I'm still simmering, but look. These bones just slide right out. Now, I don't know if there's maybe some small bones in there, but there's the bone. I just pushed on one side because when I go to um, one of the local bars, they have something called pork wings. And that's what I do to the pork wings, which evidently that's part of the, it's from the leg of the pig, and it's their tibia bone. But yeah, so these bones, I'm just sliding it right out. I thought, well, let me just see what happens here. So that's this half. Like I said, I don't know if there's little baby ones in there. But so then I'll flip that back over. Let me try it with this side. I don't know if this side's made the same or not. Let's see. Um, I don't think so. Nope. <clears throat> and like I said, I'm definitely going to have to watch. Like that one just broke in half. But, um, and these are okay to eat now. My alarm just went off on my phone to tell me to check my ribs. They're fine to eat now, um, but that side came off, but this side is not. I guess I could maybe pull them off just for, for grins. Just pull it right on out, especially since it's falling off, mostly. Somebody might say, now Terry, you better quit nibble on that. You won't be hungry when you eat. Oh yeah, yes I will. That chicken was four or five hours ago. I'll be hungry. No doubt about it. I can taste the seasonings on this. They are delicious. Well, I got it quite gummy. But it would have been gone if I messed if I picked them up anyway. Now next time what I will do, I'll um look at me. Ain't that terrible? I'm just shameful. Next time I'll definitely cover this up with, with the uh, aluminum foil. But oh yeah, that's good. Still waiting on the 
still waiting on our um, aw, our sauce to thicken up and reduce. So as soon as that's done, I'm washing my hands right now. But as soon as that's done, I'll, I'll glaze it and then we're gonna pop it in the broiler. I've never used a broiler before. Well, not on this oven. When I was a kid, mom had one. But um, um, that was, it was, at, it was like at the bottom of the, of the stove and it had a door that came out. And it wasn't like now, like mine, the bottom door is where you store stuff. But back then, it was an actual broiler. So uh, anyway, so we're gonna attempt to broil and we'll see how she goes. Okay, I got my broil on. If I die, well, if it blows up or something, it was nice knowing y'all. I used to have like a brush of some sort. Got my dishwasher running. Oh, here, here, here. I'm gonna use this little jobber. I've got it as reduced down as I can get it. Got down pretty good. And again, there's this is not tomato based. This is not um, um, barbecue sauce. This is just Terry being carnivore and doing Terry. So you could glaze with whatever you wanted to. Everybody's different. But for me, this is what I need to do. I don't want it all soupy. I don't want it all gummy. Don't want it um, um, yucky. So, all right. So, I did just enough to coat it. And I will pour that into a, um, into a plastic container. So, they're a little bit moist. Here we go. I'm going to turn this so you can see in case it blows up on me. <clears throat> it's on broil and it's on high. Uh, I think I'm supposed to raise my dealie. Set a timer for five minutes. All right. There we go. All right. I'll show you when we're done. I forgot to tell you. Remember when I said I'm not 100% carnivore? I also added just a little bit of liquid smoke into that, uh, <coughs> oh, the, um, the sauce that's on it right now not while it was in the crock pot but I put just a little of this while it was uh, you know reducing so just enough to give it a little smoky barbecue -y flavor and here we are we have us some now boneless ribs <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use the pancake turner maybe to get off I think I'll eat this one tonight. I just kind of. Nope, that won't work. And then I'll put this into here for the next time. And then I'm going to show you a comparison. Now, remember, these were done in the crock pot. So, um, and I did not use any of that soupy barbecue sauce. So, <clears throat> this is what I got. This here is what I got from Dexter Barbecue, barbecue place. So those, oh no, that's a different one. The, I, I got no sauce. So that's how they come out. Now, these are um, St. Louis ribs, and uh, <clears throat> this here is 
like I said, baby back ribs. So I'm going to kind of cut this off and bring it up close to you and let you see if I can do it without burning myself. Oh, wait, maybe I can do it this way. There. So now you see, this is dry, just like a dry rub. And there it is. Yeah. No sugar, no um, no Splenda, don't need all that stuff. Just some good old dry rub stuff, the crock pot, and then the um, broiler. So there you go. <clears throat> so you have seen everything I ate today. <clears throat> um, and everything that I'll eat up during this upcoming week, um, other than a couple steaks, you know, um, cause I'll have this one day for supper and this one day for supper, or I may have it for lunch cause I only have three ground beef lunches. So who knows, but that's how I eat. I just kind of live on the edge, but there you go. This is, this is my food prep that I did today. <clears throat>